Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics, and this video will be on Page Layout and Sketchbook Pro. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, I want to say thanks everybody. Um, just reached the 15,000 subscriber mark, and I'm very happy to say thank you for supporting and being there for me um, and helping me to do that. So um, I put out a video request to uh, kind of thank everybody, and I only got one response on a video request for this particular um, 15,000 mark. So uh, my thanks go out to you, Kristen, for, uh, for replying on that. And so you guess what? Your video got picked since nobody else uh, threw the, uh, you know, the request into the proverbial hat there. So essentially what Kristen requested was to make a, uh, you know, a Sketchbook Pro video where we teach uh, or I go over the layout or the page layout, you know, which a lot of people do have this question. So it's very viable to uh, address that. So we'll get started. So as you've probably seen before in my other drawing videos, I have my little Ram Studios comics uh, page layout. Now, this page layout is kind of a uh, conglomeration of a couple. Um, you can get page layouts like this all, all over online. Just Google comic book uh, layout panel, Bristol board, anything like that. You can also just download or purchase a, uh, uh, a Bristol board blue line. Uh, by blue are made by blue line I should say and you can scan that so it's another way to do it essentially it's 11 by 17 we'll go to image size 11 by 17 at 300 dpi that's the way that I like to work and if you see that gives me a 64 meg file so pretty good size file but you know that you want to be depending on what your system can handle and then essentially when you zoom in and you draw a line as long as you get a nice line clarity then that's all that really matters so it's kind of a combo of those two things you know your line clarity and your ability for the system to maneuver and and work quickly so as far as the page layout itself the main things to keep in mind are you've got your live area so here's our live area this dotted line here obviously so essentially that's where all your main story goes and, and your main panel layout um, to the point where it gets cropped I mean it's self-explanatory it crops off right there but then sometimes you get a little bit extra bleed. Or for instance, if you're trying to take your artwork and make it look like there's an arm coming off the, you know, the, the heroes punching off the screen, right? And you don't even see the arm anymore. Well, you can draw past this, but just keep in mind that somewhere in here, it's going to get cropped off. So if you want that full bleed effect where your artwork goes to the very edge, you're going to draw past that line. So that's all that means. And if you don't want that, then you've got to stay way off into this area over here. So if I was to command A, delete, if I was to bring my art back here and say I wanted the fist to kind of stop here, that's a pretty ugly fist. He's got club hand, um, which that's not like when you're in the club and you start pumping your fist in there. That's a different kind of club hand. So essentially, you know, when his hand goes like that, you've got your crop line here. You may or may not want to draw that close to your crop area because um, you could lose some of it you know it just depends from that point it goes off to the printer and then they kind of you know could foobar it or whatever you know so it's you, you just want to stay in your live area go a little bit past it if it's something that's pertinent to the story and if you want a full bleed you draw way past it into there so that's about as simplistic as I can explain what that is and, I, and I'm sure that's even a little bit more simplified than it really is but uh, that's always works for me so now you can either download this one. I'll even make this available on my DeviantArt if I haven't already. I got to check, uh, but you can find them all over the place. Uh, they're they're all over you know the internet. And then also um, another good resource is go to Kablam, and Kablam actually has page layouts, especially if you're going to go with digital printing anyways, uh, like I do. Um, I actually use them to print uh, some of my Blackstone comics. Um, they give you a template that you can drop in the background. So also check that out. And that's uh, that'll be under, uh, just go to Kablam, and it's like standard comic book page layout template or something like that. You'll have to search in there and find it. Okay, so now to the meat of the story. I believe that what uh, Kristen was requesting, uh, and hopefully I get this right, I think he wants to know more about page layouts within Sketchbook Pro. Uh, if you use Manga Studio, you know it's got all kinds of, of neat features for that. But here's my workaround that I've found for it. So say I've got, you know, a standard page layout and I've got, 
you know you always want to do you know some kind of establishing shot so maybe a bigger opening shot like this and I'll, I usually rough sketch my essential thumbnail or storytelling you know in the boxes or whatever maybe I got something like this so here's my very rough thumbnail nice safe margins nothing too crazy you know maybe a little bit crazy with this part right there but not much you know everything's pretty much in the safe zone of the live area so there's my rough thumbnail of what I see happening and I'm not gonna get too much into drawing because this is just on page layouts you know essentially you always want your storytelling to go like this you know over such it's going like this like this Hope you like my arrows here. I've spent many years perfecting my ability to draw arrows. Like that. So that's your that's your read, right, on this type of panel. Um, and hopefully you can do that with your artwork where you don't need to put big funky arrows in there. So now let's go ahead and take this. I'll tone my thumbnail down. I'll create a new layer, which I already have a few layers. I don't know why. Delete some of those. Don't need all those. Okay. So on this top layer, I'm now going to show you what I do uh, to build my panels relatively fast and still give them some style like we've got here. Um, you just go to this nice little box tool here. This box tool works off the size of your brush. So let me hit Control-Z. I use the right bracket. You can see it's showing me the size of the brush interactively going up. And now I've got a nice thicker box there. So I'll go down a couple more. There it is again. Okay, so now I want this to fit this uh, kind of more design-oriented that I've got here, a little bit of distortion. Sketchbook Pro has this great distortion feature right here. So you just basically drag that over top of this, pull these corner points where you want them to be. Bada bing, bada boom, box. Pretty easy, right? I mean, that doesn't get much easier than that. So... You know, and then if you want to do another one, instead of uh, trying to draw it and, and finagle with uh, something on the same layer, just add another layer. Come to your box tool again. Draw a box. You know, here's your opportunity to, you know, maybe you want the impact to, I don't know, segue into this and show something. I don't know why you would increase the border size, but maybe you want to. So you use the bracket key, increase the border size a little bit. Just so there's a little more variance, maybe it looks more depthy. Um, I think actually it would look, make more sense if you cr increase the border size, but this panel was in front of this panel. So let's actually take that down a few. That looks a little too mongoloid, and that looks too thin. But we'll roll with it for now. Now you know what? One more. Okay, good enough. So now we're on a separate layer. We can grab the distortion keys, and I'll keep in mind you don't just have to grab these. You can actually grab the bar here too. It's a really great distortion feature. I find myself using this more and more, uh, especially for perspective drawing, because you can do some really, you know, kind of cheats with it. Um, even though I shouldn't be telling you to cheat, but, you know, it's okay to cheat every now and then, as long as it's not on your girlfriend. Um, so there's our next, uh, you know, next box there. I can simply erase that back, and boom, there's my, you know, segue from panel to panel. Quick and easy. I mean, I didn't time myself, but, but I would assume that was pretty fast. Add another layer. And then once these are done, you just can condense these layers down. You obviously don't need all these separate layers. Um, and then if you want a nice, clean, you know, uh, continuity from panel to panel here, maybe some of your drama is up here, and here you just got nice, clean continuity. Then here you would just draw. If I hold shift, I get a perfect square. I didn't want to do that, though, actually. All right, if I hold nothing, I just drag it out to get a perfect square. So let me get back. Oh, I'm on the eraser for some reason. Uh, keep in mind, too, whatever pen you use, the, the tool is going to go off that pen. So there's a whole nother slew of opportunity there. Uh, you know, there's a faded border if you needed it or whatever. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Whatever happens here utilizes whatever tool you're on here. So I'll just I use the pen tool for this uh, particular part of what I'm doing. Now here, if I needed a nice smooth continuity from panel to panel or frame to frame, whatever you want to call these, uh, I would simply just take that, scale it to the size that I want, in which case I want to make sure I'm nice and close to my live area, especially with the borders. You don't want your borders cut off, so they need to be in the safe zone. Uh, the artwork can flow outside of the safe zone, again, if it's not pertinent to the storytelling. 
Uh, duplicate that, move it over like that. Duplicate again. See, I'm just dragging over to the duplicate, move it over again, like so, like so. Okay, so now I can hit Command E and merge those down. And now I got all three of these on one layer, which is nice. So what I could do is, you know, if I like what I got going here, I can just start drawing in my uh, storytelling now. If I wanted to add a little bit more distortion and flair to what's going on, I could easily grab the distortion now that they're all combined. And I could maybe do something like that. You know, because I'm, I'm always, you know, I'm always distorting stuff. I, I can't help it. I, I just like a really warped sense of storytelling, I guess. So now if I wanted this panel to be in front, I could add another layer in between the two. I could either, you know, I, well, I could erase either either or, you know. So if I want this one to stick out front, I would erase some of the bottom ones here. Actually, I'll duplicate that, show you what I'm talking about. So now I could just take my hard erase, if I actually grab it, and I'm on the wrong one. Oh, all right, if I wanted panel two to be out in front, I would erase these. Goodness, there we go, like that. And I somehow lost control Z when you get confused like I just did. Where'd panel one go, there it is. Experiencing some technical difficulties, please uh, stay tuned. Okay, so if I duplicate that, and turn the eye off the one. Now I can simply erase that. There we go. Slowly getting back on point here. Okay, so like that. And that's how, you know, I've got some depth in my panels now. And then, you know, you can select the background. You, you know, once you're done, I would just recommend merging them all down. So we'll, we'll call this good. We'll say this is what we're after, right? I'll get rid of the layers you can't see. Select that, merge down. Merge down, all the way down. Oh, not that last one, because that's our sketch. Yeah. So here's our, our layers are all merged together, or our uh, panels. You know, we could probably get rid of the template. I always leave mine in. I just like the look of it. Um, but it's up to you. You could get rid of that at this point. And then for your background, say you were doing a, uh, I like to do black fills, or maybe some artwork behind the panels to push another layer of depth. That's totally up to you. But now I could take the selection tool, which is here, I believe. The magic wand should work fine on this. Yep, select that background. I can add a new layer, drop that to the back. Grab my bucket tool right here. And boom. I could paint that black in there. Hit Command D, see if that looks right. And you know, there's my fill for the background. You know, and you can start playing around with that too. You could do something like you know, say you want some uh, white dividers around some of these panels, you could take, let's see, pen tool, hold alt, select the background. Now I've got white in my uh, color puck over here. And we'll take the line tool. And I could start, you know, drawing in some kind of art deco kind of crazy borders. You know, whatever, something like that, eh, maybe, maybe just around these two. You don't want to go around all of it because then it would just, uh, it takes away the effect. So maybe I'm trying to do something a little more designy in that part. Um, and then say I wanted to do something design oriented back here, but I don't want to obviously keep tracing the same effect or to look overall, it'll look pretty boring. So I can add another layer and let's try doing the lines this way, like so. And then let's fill that like so and maybe just a couple thinner ones like little pinstripe lines this is my my graphic side coming out um, you know wanting to pinstripe stuff like I do on car graphics like that you know so it just gives it a little bit more design I mean maybe that's maybe that works maybe it doesn't it, you know once you get your artwork in there you might go back and want to change your panel so maybe save some of the layers but essentially that 
you know, that's how I would use Sketchbook Pro to design some of my panels. And obviously you could take these tools and really go crazy with it. This is just a very basic representation. I like to always start a little bit more simplified and that allows you to, you know, now you get in there and think outside of the box and come up with your own uh, great ideas. So hopefully this has helped you. Again, I do want to thank everybody for supporting this channel and helping it get to this 15,000 mark. Uh, as I've said before in other videos, I really didn't expect it to even go this far. So to see that happen, you know, it's kind of fun and cool and I, I do appreciate it. So be sure to always like, subscribe, share the videos, and then also let me know what you'd like to see in the future. That's what this channel is about. I do have another channel you can check out too. It's a paid channel, but this channel is for you to interact with and you know, let me know what you want to see in the future because it's a, you know, it's a free channel. It's, it's for, for the fun and the, uh, you know, progression of all us artists. So, uh, comic book nerds like myself. So thanks very much for watching. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.